title of today's message is What If? And it comes from uh, Matthew 21, chapter 21, verse 17 to 22. Via a long way to get there. The hand of God is always in our lives. And if we pay attention, we'll see amazing connections, you know, things that align, things that make one pause things that will bring such joy and even a tear to our lives. If you've ever dealt with somebody and you had some interaction and you left from it, knowing that they had the Christ, that had Christ in them and it brought a tear to to your eye, you'll understand what I mean by that. There are many times we as a body of Christ will have those moments where you, where you just know that you just had another encounter with somebody that's saved and has Christ. There are no coincidences. I'd like to take you on a journey of God's supreme love, specifically his love for this body. See, as living stones on the foundation of Jesus Christ, we make a wall of protection and security and love around this church, this body of Christ, our children, our marriages, our relationships, our love for one another, our display of Christ in our lives, our walks, our relationships with Jesus, centered on his incredible sacrifice on the cross for our sins, on his word, his resurrection, and his promise of the Holy Spirit. It is no coincidence that Will sung the things that he just sung, Will and Michelle. Did you hear the things he said about the Holy Spirit? We didn't plan that. That just happened because that's what the Holy Spirit does. Myself and my family are some of those living stones. Recently, the sledgehammer of life hit us pretty hard with the death of my dad, Anthony Koprovic. Not an easy one to endure, I assure you. I, find, I found myself pondering the short time of life. The Bible calls it a vapor. The Lord really put some joy in my heart during this tough time. He kept giving me thoughts of Donnie focused on his son that will be here soon. It's also no coincidence that Kiri was just up here and that son is yet to be born. The thoughts of a new father and a new son. Thoughts that every living stone in this body will be sharing the things of the Lord with that son, just as we have with others, such as John Lucas and the other children that have come through here. The last verse in today's text is Matthew 21, 22. And this is what it says. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. For years, we here have prayed for my dad and his battle with cancer. I recall four years back or so, right in this room, praying for my dad's salvation. My whatsoever wasn't focused on the healing. It was, it was salvation. It was eternal life for someone I loved, my dad. It was the Lord's will above all. Healing was third in the priority list of things I was praying for in my whatsoever list. My mom and dad had religion as use and both walked away from the church. Whether they were saved back then, I don't know. What I do know is a few years back, Both of them desired the things of the Lord, started to attend a local church in their hometown in Ohio. They fellowshiped. They couldn't get enough of being with the people of that church. They attended revivals, Bible studies. They read the Bible at home. They always talked about it. Even there was a time where I had a long drive from Norfolk and my dad would call me and he would read the Bible and I would interpret what he was saying to the best of my ability. He just had a yearning for wanting to know what this is all about. But most of all, I knew they believed that they had faith and that they loved the Lord and that they were saved. This I have no doubts. That very fact puts me at extreme ease, even during this hard time. The journey of God's supreme love in my life has been absolutely amazing. I am so thankful to be saved. He continues to bless me in so many ways. 
And I'd like to really share the last four months with you. James 1.22 says this. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. I spent a lot of time reading this word to myself, not exactly sharing it with anybody, but really wanting to understand it and wanting to know it. Being a doer of the word is a, it's a big step. It's a really big step, and we're all supposed to do it. Later in James 125, it says this, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. The Lord rewards us for it. The Lord is faithful and was and is really working on me. He kept putting me alone, alone with him, preparing me. See, each of us have talents and certain things that the Lord has given you with skills and you might be able to draw, you might be able to sing, you might be able to play an instrument. He gave you each and every one of those things so that way we glorify him in the execution of that. One of the things the Lord gave me is he blessed me with being able to see connections, things that kind of align. Some may call it the gift of discernment. The best way I can describe it is the ability to recall things and, that match up, that you know something's out of place and and, and when it comes up again at a different time or somebody else I'm interacting with, and I recognize it immediately, it's like a missing puzzle piece for me. And my wife will tell you that I kind of zone off many times thinking of all these different things, and it just, it's just the kind of how it works for me. So let me walk through the last few months. I started saying yes to more things I would normally say no to. No is easy. No is really easy because you're not out there. You're not taking a chance. You're not living by faith. You're just kind of, yeah, I got this to do. I got that to do. I can come up with a million excuses of why not to spend extra time or those type of things. But I started to do more and started saying yes more. Being available, even if it costs me. Sometimes I would think of bridges too far excuses. Like, you know, I can't drive down there. That's kind of a little out of the way. I wouldn't say those in those words. I would just kind of say, uh, I'll think about it. I'll pray on it. The Spirit urged me to do a deep study in the Holy Spirit recently for three months, three solid months every single day. I'm at 170 pages, 727 verses, 1,155 hints, metaphors, names, titles, anything you can think of with the Holy Spirit learning as much as I can about the Holy Spirit. Clearly, the Lord knew I didn't know the Holy Spirit as well as I should. This, stu this study continues on. At a men's breakfast happened in Sand Hills, North Carolina recently. Michelle and I were, were going to go down and spend the evening down there, and things changed at the very last minute. Uh, so I didn't actually have the opportunity to ask one of the men to come with me. So I just went by myself alone with the Lord, what a blessing it was, I got to tell you. Prayed on the way down, all kinds of different things. But what if I didn't go? What if I would have said no? All that time with 30 men there sharing the word, I was the one they asked to share the word. Out of the, out of the blue, they asked me to. I shared it on the Holy Spirit and the walking in the Spirit, dwelling on May 5th, as I move down this timeline, Brian Owens shares with me a blessing of Pastor Chuck Smith, a sermon series on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What if Brian doesn't share that with me? He has no idea I'm writing a, what seems to be a novel at this stage of, about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knew, though. And then I had a teaching on May 8th, Wednesday night, and something happened here, right here, that is very different than any other time for me. So we're, we're getting ready to do service, and I'm, I'm teaching that evening. And about 15 minutes beforehand, I come in here, I kneel right there, and I surrender to the Lord. I said, Lord, what do you want? What do you want me to do? As soon as I walk out, Pastor Tom grabs me off to the side, which he doesn't do this especially right before you're getting ready to go give the word because he's allowing you to collect your thoughts. 
pulls me in the side room. He goes, I'm just compelled to ask you, and, and I've been thinking about this for a while, but I'd like to know if you want to be a pastor. And uh, I said, I'll, I'll pray on that. I'm like, I'm like, that's some incredible timing that just happened there. I didn't tell him about what just happened. Nobody knew that. Then later that evening, at 8.49 p.m., Brian remembers that he didn't even send me the sermon for Pastor Chuck on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and he sends it to me, sends me the link. Three days later, sends me the link, right, because the Holy Spirit's pressing on him, right? Exactly what I needed at that exact moment, the Holy Spirit knew. May 15th, the Lord shows me Isaiah 32, 15, really profound time and realize that every morning I'm spending a lot of time in the word and, and just in, in hanging with my brothers and, and discussing the Lord every day. Phenomenal time. There's a group of about four or five of us even, even at work to where we discuss the Lord all the time and it's just you could see things working and it would take me a long, long time to explain all those. Just realize that they exist all over the place. So that Isaiah 32:15 says this, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. And they know what the Lord had for that. What he had that for me was to share with somebody I'm extremely close to in a time of need. And what it means is this. It means as the spirit is poured out and as you walk in it, the Lord will bless whatever plan he has for you. And as you walk in that blessing or that fruit from the Lord, he'll bless even more when you continue to walk in the spirit. So much so that the fruitful field now is a forest with his blessings. Pretty, pretty dramatic verse. Then we come to May 18th. And I attended a night of worship at Corinth Baptist Church. Incredible time of worship where this young man is singing and playing an instrument in front of his dad. And his, and his mom is an incredible singer. It was a beautiful time of glorifying the Lord. The following morning, as I'm reading a 1903 book, I like old books, by Teasley. It's called The Holy Spirit and Other Spirits. And I'm on page 206. 206. I've been reading this thing for three weeks. And it just so happens, first page I open up to says this. To sing in the spirit, what is more heavenly or illustrative of an inspiration than to hear a song of praise to God rendered by one who feels that every chord originates in his or her heart? That's what we got to see last night, that night, is just being filled with the spirit and glorifying the Lord. I took a picture of that page and I sent it to my good friend Nate, who shared it with his wife, I'm sure his son. It was just perfect description of exactly what they just did, glorifying the Lord in the spirit. Just what you just saw with Michelle and Will, loving the Lord, singing out to the Lord, and you hear it in their prayer when they, when they, when they break from that. What if I didn't send that picture? What if I wasn't reading that book? What if I wasn't seeking the Lord in all of that? Many blessings would not have occurred because of that. Just shortly after that, on May 20th to the 22nd, was the East Coast Pastors Conference. Now, we've been planning this thing for months, right? And it's, uh, there was about four, four or five of us that were going to go. It dwindled down to where it was just me and Tom, Pastor Tom. And uh, something happened in Tom's life where he could not go. It was extremely easy for me to not go to the East Coast Pastor Conference up in Sandy Cove, Maryland. I thought about it numerous times, and I just stepped out on faith, and I did. And I want you to realize this isn't me stepping out. It's, it's the Lord working through me saying, no, you're going to go, and I'm going to put you alone. And that time was unbelievable. But what if I didn't go? There was even a moment there, and there's so much irony happening here today. It's crazy. It's the spirit for sure. And I'd like you to take note of all that because there is no coincidence that Heidi's here today. Is 
I'm at, at, it's like a, at a low point of it, I'm, I'm like, man, Lord, I know nobody here. Nobody. Help me. Right? I get a tap on the back of my shoulder, and who is it? Her husband. Unbelievable. Unbelievable time. For the first time, I actually... I picked up a, I went for a run, and at the end of the run, I, I saw this stone. It was just laying on the ground like any rock, and I picked it up, and uh, I'm like, I'm keeping this. I mean, it's a, a rock, and I, and I kept thinking, you need a memorial stone for this, but I don't think that was me telling me I needed a memorial stone. I think it was the spirit. So I just wrote East Coast Pastors Conference on it, and it sits on a mantle in my house. Wednesday, 22nd, we dro- I drove back that, de- that evening, and uh, go at home, and as I get home, it's probably like 6 o'clock or something like that. Uh, my wife, Michelle, saying, hey, look, uh, have you heard from your mom? I said, uh, no. I said, uh, your dad's turned for the worse. The uh, cancer's three times the size in his brain as well as in his lungs. And, uh, you know, they're going to go through radiation and those type of things. They think everything's fine, uh, but you really need to go home. Now, realize that over the cycle of cancer, there's ups and downs of flare-ups and all these other type of things. So it was really easy for me to go, hey, I just got back from this, this conference I was at, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll go there over the weekend, right? Because i got to catch up on work, and i got all kinds of things going on that I can fill that excuse bridge too far. She said, prompts me again. And uh, in our life, in our relationship, she's a one or two type prompting, and then, then she'll walk away. However, this time she prompted more, maybe three or four, and was very aggressive with the fact that you must go. You need to go. And I said, okay, I just finished unpacking. After she said that, I went back in, repacked my suitcase with new things, and left it that morning. But what if I didn't go? So again, I'm alone with the Lord. I'm taking a drive, and I'm listening to Andrew Murray's Indwelling of Christ, phenomenal, phenomenal book describing the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit interacts with our lives. And I'm probably 290 miles into this trip, right at the edge of uh, Virginia going into West Virginia. My parents are in Ohio. And from that, the, uh, I hear on, on it, you need to get alone with the Lord. That's what the, the audio book of the, of the that says. I'm like, all right, cool, I'll do that. And all of a sudden, I see a sign that says Humpback Bridge. Never seen it, don't know what it is, anything like it. I pull off, and it's the most serene postcard you have ever seen. It's an it's a old covered bridge from the 1800s with big, gigantic rocks and a ramble creek, and you just hear these sounds. And if you know anything about me, I am an A to B guy. There are no P breaks. There are none of that type of stuff. Don't eat, don't drink, let's go. And for me to stop on a trip is pretty aggressive step as any of my family would tell you. So we pull off, or I pull off here, and I spend about a half hour praying to the Lord about my dad, reading the word about the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, I look down, and there's another rock. It's like purple, so out of place. It was just odd looking. And I picked it up and took that with me. I had an incredible time with my dad, one that was very different, very just like we always, we've always we always been extremely tight, and he's always been my hero, but I have never actually told him that, but I did that time, and I told him, you know, how, what a great dad he has been and how work ethic and things that he taught me, but I never shared those ever, and we just spent some joyous time. It was really awesome. I'm going to leave and come back on Saturday. And I get another prompting in the Holy Spirit. It says, no, nah, you need to stay. Go to church tomorrow with them. Now, realize that it's 560 miles, right? My boss that's here that, yes, I drove 560 miles. I'm sorry about that, sir. However, I stayed, and to do that, you, I'm going to get home at midnight the following day on Sunday, right? It's very easy to say, no, nah, I'm just going to leave early. That way I can get home at a decent hour, get ready for work the following day. But I stayed. So I go in and uh, local church, and uh, um, the pastor, I know him. He comes up, says hello. It's, uh, it's a lot of family that are there. 
And he says, you know, Chris, I was going to ask you to, uh, to preach today. I'm like, he goes, but you didn't prepare anything. So then I, I probably should have reached out to Bob, my uncle. And, then, and immediately I get this, well, I'm not doing this. Right? I, I don't say that out loud, but, you know, you're like, no, it's, I appreciate that next time. Right? So I go back to my seat. Uh, I'm in the pew, standing next to my dad, my mom. And uh, the, uh, the Holy Spirit is just beating me up inside. Why didn't you say yes? What are you doing? You should have said yes. You know, that type of thing. Oh, well, that's, uh, he was just being nice. So I'm going, I'm having this battle. It's an old school church, and they're singing the hymns and those type of things, and it's pretty phenomenal. And uh, all right, and I'm like, okay, Lord, if you confirm it, I'll do it, finally, in this battle that's going on here. So they finish singing, and, uh, and their, their, their kind of cycle of stuff they do is they'll do testimonials and prayers and thir- certain things like that. Um, and it's about 10 minutes into all the things that they do, and, and Pastor Anthony gets ready to speak, and as he's getting ready to deliver his word, he stops, like cold stop, and says, Liz, Tony, you ever heard Chris preach? And points to my parents. Said, and they're like, no. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'll do it. That's all I say. <laughs> and, I, and I come up, and he goes, yeah, you sure? I'm like, Absolutely. And I had an incredible time in the Lord that morning of just words and things that I read. And, and I'm like, and I just got up there, and, and kind of what I said was, it's not me. I'm just going to, I can do this in the power of the Holy Spirit, so let's see what happens. And the verses flowed. It was just a phenomenal, phenomenal time for me. And I'm watching. Uh, my mom and dad tear up. Phenomenal. So then we leave and go to the back. It service is over. And I, uh, I asked Pastor Anthony, I said, what made you ask that? And I don't know anything about this. This He goes, well, on Monday, I was, ca- I was going to call Bob. Okay, I wasn't going to Ohio, family. I was never going to Ohio until Wednesday. This guy had no idea I was coming there. For him to even be thinking of me is so one off, ten off, it's crazy. For the prompting of my my wife, think about that. Think of the spirit movement in all of that. Amazing, absolutely amazing. We go to lunch, and when we go to lunch, it's a it's a family affair. So there's ten or fifteen of us, and. We go to this local place they go to, and, and everything is just, I'm just watching and listening to the conversation and just sitting next to Dad, and it's just very serene. They're talking about uh, an uncle that passed away in the past and whether he was saved or not and, and those type of things. And, uh, and I mentioned a thing that happened two days prior to that of very incredible confirmation where my mom and I are talking about uh, different denominations and beliefs. And as we're talking, we hear from the hallway, I'm saved. Jesus Christ died for my sins. It's like, what? Out of the blue. Our conversation was over. That was my dad. He really wanted us to know where he stood. And just, it was a very nice goodbye. But I didn't know anything was going to happen with that. So we leave. I drive home, get home safely, safe and sound. And immediately right after that, on June 1st, we have a men's conference where Cal and Alex and I go down to that. And it was an easy time to say no to that as well. The whole theme was all in, surrendering. It was all about stop living in the flesh and serve me. That's the whole reason you are here, if you are saved, is to serve me, the Lord. Great time. So glad I went. Then on June 4th, we had a men's Bible study. The men's Bible studies are the first and third of every month. I invite you to come to that. Something very strange happened that evening. No one else showed up. Now, you may think that may be a bad thing. I would tell you that it was unbelievable. I sat there for the whole hour and did eight chapters of John that the Lord wanted to show me. It was just so awesome. And, you know, my wife has... And I tell her no one came. She goes, well, why didn't you come home? I'm like, because I was with the Lord. Beautiful. 
Notice all these threads of these times being alone with the Lord. Just unbelievable time. Then soon after that, the verse John 17, 26 hits me like a ton of bricks. It's Jesus speaking. And I have declared unto them my na- thy name and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. So chapter 17 in John is really the Lord's Prayer. Many will reference uh, Matthew 6 as the Lord's Prayer, but this is the Lord praying throughout to the Father. And, what, and I focus on the second part, and it was just I, this, this struggle that was happening with me. That part says this, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. And I know God is love. I know God is spirit. I know the Holy Spirit dwells in us and Christ in us and God's love for the Son in us. 2 Timothy 1, 7, 9 says this, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of your Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So I kept meditating on this, and I'm struggling, and I'm texting my friends. I'm like, what do you think? What do you, do? What do you take from this? I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to see here? In this love in Christ, I'm, I'm asking, is this love in Christ coming together? What is this? God's love? Is it we can't embrace it until we accept Jesus and he dwells in us? Then the love is the reconciliation with the Father? I mean, you think of the, the different pieces of this. That very day, I was reading The Masters in Dwelling by Andrew Murray. And what do I read but this? The Holy Spirit is the bond of union between the Father and Son. And that bond is love. The Holy Spirit is just the love of God come to dwell in the heart. When he dwells with me and my brother, we learn to love each other. Now, of course, the Holy Spirit is much more than that. And Andrew Murray goes into detail throughout his book of all the different attributes and things associated with the Holy Spirit. The key point I'd like you to walk away with is this. We have the love of God in us. Think about that. We have the love of God in us. When we allow the Holy Spirit to work through us, the love of God is seen by others. So continuing on my timeline, June 9th, my dad went to the altar at his home church in Ohio, and he's already saved, but he stayed there the whole time throughout the entire service. Unusual thing for him to do. I didn't know anything about that, nor did he know anything about me going to the altar either. For my dad to do that in front of everybody is a huge thing. It's, it's a huge thing for all the rest of my family to see my dad do that. He made it clear to all. Then recently after that, I had a, the following Friday, that, that was Sunday, and then Wednesday I had a, another teaching in Proverbs where there were so many different things that went like this that I couldn't go into to kind of describe, but just realized many things that I pointed out that, the, that were for me from the Holy Spirit that he showed me. Then June 14th, that Friday, 4.17 in the morning, I have an abrupt awakening. And I'm an early person as it is. And I have an early 4 a.m. time with the Lord, and it commenced. It was a very serene time of study, just beautiful. It was the power of the Spirit. The first thing that I I decided to to do that morning was listen to a sermon by Pastor uh, Ben Lawson from Sand Hills. And it was all about the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's about Philippians 2 that he went into. And he says this, this thing that just, man, it's amazing. And it just stood out. We can't do this in the nature, in our own nature. It has to be done by the Spirit of God. We must operate by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he just kept talking about that. Awesome. Soon after that, 
I started going in deep study of, of the word charity and the meaning of charity and, and those type of things. And I actually posted on it, and, it, and it's God's supreme love if you drill into what charity is. King James has it quite a few times. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 through 7. I'm going to read that to you. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity, charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth, beareth all things, believing all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Charity is God's supreme love. And when we have it, when we have that agape love, and we share it with each other, that love for one another is Christ in Christ. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Pastor Chuck Smith would, would say, a good self examining of your walk with the Lord is to read 1 Corinthians 13. And every single time you see the word charity, put your name in it. And see how good your walk with the Lord is. Then after that, instead of the word charity, put Jesus' name. And then you'll see. Powerful, powerful lesson. On June 14th, that same day, Friday, my father passed away in his sleep at my sister's house. And as the Lord would have it, they were at a, uh, uh, my nephew's graduation, and he ensured that my mom wasn't alone. They lived out in the boonies, so if, if he would have passed with her, it would have been quite a, even more difficult. Again, a memorial stone. I'm walking, and I'm thinking I should get a rock. And I don't know why I'm thinking about getting rocks, but I mean, I've never done that. I've never collected rocks or anything like that. And as I step, this, I, this rock pops right up, the ugliest rock you have ever seen. And I pick it up, and it's big, and I'm like, I'm like, really, Lord? And I just smile, and because I know, I know. It's the Lord showing his presence, saying, hey, I'm here. I'm here in the good here in the bad. That same week was Father's Day, June 16th. And I kept asking my brothers and Pastor Tom, say, hey, pray, pray that I'll have time with my sister. My sister and I have uh, had a very stre stressed relationship that stretched even more when I got saved. Because when in the beginning of being saved, I was just pummeling her with Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, this, that. She's like, hey, man, you, you know, you need to stop. And then just the calls were a little bit more distance. The timing of certain things were just so hard. It was just very strained. And in this time, we spent about an hour. And, and I asked her in the very beginning, this is all I said to her. I said, like, do you want to know what dad believed? She says, yes. So I shared it, shared the whole thing. And I kept referencing this, the verse John 6, 3, 3, but not because I knew what John 6, 3, 3 was. I was just using that as an example, as in a number. And it says this, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the word. And what I said is, the Lord is faithful. You watch. Somewhere, somehow, John 6, 3, 3, 3 is going to come into your life when you least expect it but pay attention, and that's what I'm telling you. I pray he does that. On June 20th, while back in Ohio preparing for the funeral, I looked through my dad's Bible, and he had a bunch of healing verses highlighted. That Friday, the 21st, just recently, we had the viewing, all the family. And on the 22nd, that Saturday, we had the funeral service where I, I executed the, the uh, eulogy, and, you know, honoring my dad and giving glory to the Lord. There has not been a family gathering of this magnitude that I can remember. The Lord used me to share the gospel with a hundred or so family members. I could have never have done that a year ago, two years ago, at all, in any shape or form. I would have somehow given a piece of it, not the full thing. Call it boldness, call it whatever you may. 
but that is definitely the Holy Spirit and not me that was able to do that. What if I didn't? What would happen if I didn't? I don't know what fruit will be sowed from that, but we shall see. And remember, witnessing isn't always verbal. When you witness for Jesus Christ, is it's by living a life that shows Jesus Christ in you. Live the Christian life before them, before all, and Christ will show himself. The Lord used this church, your whatsoever prayers. That very day, I know you prayed for my family. We, we appreciate it. He used our time here over the years, growing together to, to speak truth to many who are lost, and just all the interaction we've had over the years of times of trial, times of peaks and valleys, and just loving on another. He used all that during this time of pain. The lost are those who don't know him. And I've got to ask, do you know him? What if you choose not to know him? Do you know anyone who doesn't know him? What happens if you don't share the gospel with them? Yesterday was June 29th, my dad's birthday. He would have been 69. I rejoice knowing that I'll see my dad again one day. But it pains me to think about the others I won't, unless they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Personally, I need to feel that pain for those I, I don't even have an existing relationship with. I need to feel that pain for someone who is maybe here today. I don't know. I need God's love in me to do that. In my own strength, it's impossible. If you are someone here this morning or watching online who is unsaved, you got to know that God loves you. And if you listen and heed this word, your life will change forever. Know that God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Know and believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Know that every unsaved or unsaved or, or saved person has sinned as well. Know that whatever your sins are, great or small, measured in man's eyes, we still fall short. Know that there is only one that was perfect and sinless, and that is Jesus Christ. Know that our sins separate us from God, just as you are today if you are unsaved. Know that the wages of sin is death, and because he loves you, Jesus Christ paid the price for those sins, past, present, and future. Know he died on the cross, and he died for your sins as well. Know that there is only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Know that you can choose your choice, your free will choice, to ask Jesus Christ to forgive you for his sins. Know that you can ask Jesus to come into your life as your Lord and Savior. And I pray you do. And I'm going to pray over that right now. So join me in prayer, please. Father God, Lord, that's your gospel. You are the way and the truth, Lord. Lord, I pray anybody that 
heard that or hears that and they don't know you, that they'll, they'll realize that there is no coincidence that they are here today in hearing these words, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will just save them, that you will, that you will open their eyes and open their ears. Allow them that glimmer of that light to where they ask somebody that does know you, hey, what is this Jesus? What is this all about? I don't get some of these things. It doesn't make any sense, but I want to know. Lord, I pray, pray that you'll, you'll just bless them and just give the boldness to the, to the Christians to share the right words in prayer, the right, the right demeanor, not like I did with my sister, but the right empathy and compassion to just meet them where they are and talk about Jesus. I know it could easily be a fire hose, Lord. I pray that you'll bless that. In the name of Jesus, I pray. You may have wondered at some time so far if I'm ever going to get to Matthew 21. I would note to you that I have been in Matthew 21. If you remember correctly, Matthew 21 started with the triumphal entry, entry into Jerusalem by Jesus, Palm Sunday. This started the week that ended with his sacrifice on the cross for each and every one of us. Why? Because he loves us. Jesus also in Matthew 21 went to the temple of God and overturned the tables of the money changers. He cleanses the temple. We are his temple. And he cleanses us. His spirit teaches us and guides us every single day if we allow it. In Matthew 21, 13, it states, And said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. There's a sermon by Jim Cimbala called House of Prayer, from Jim Cimbala from the Brooklyn Tabernacle. I pray that each and every one of you will watch it. It is extremely powerful and definitely an anointed message. Every faithful body of Christ must be a house of prayer. This is a praying church. But what if we prayed more? What if we all showed up at 6.30 on Wednesday night and prayed? What if on that Wednesday night we all prayed for your lost child? your lost aunt that you may love so much, or a dad or a mom that you know is not saved? What if we as a church decided that never again will someone stand up here willing to pray for somebody else and allow somebody not to come up and be idle, just standing here willing to pray for somebody here. What if we said never again? What if we prayed for the pain in your back or the headaches you suffer for or some ailment you have? What if we all showed up and prayed for that? What if we turned the world off for even 10 minutes and stop to pray for a coworker, maybe a boss, maybe a neighbor. I mean, seriously, seriously. Do we really believe that God is the almighty God of the universe, the creator of everything? That he can do anything? That nothing's impossible for him? Or are we just here on a Sunday trying to do the right thing? This is an extreme, raging battle, and it's all around us. Where people we know 
And people we don't know will die and not have eternal life. Think of the gravity of that statement. People will die the second death. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And it's one or the other. It's saved or unsaved. What kind of Christian am I if I don't care about that? And what if I did care? What am I going to do? What if I went up to any one of you and asked you, who can we pray for? Each of you would have a name. I know you would. Beloved family, Satan is on his A-game, and we are giving ground. Every time we don't engage, every time we don't care, every time we turn a blind eye, every time we stay comfortable, every time we are completely content with the life we are living now, we have a choice to get on the offensive or stay on the defensive. But make no mistake, Satan is picking off the isolated, the alone, the vulnerable, one by one. And one day, he'll be at my door and yours. And it may not be you specifically. Maybe it's your wife. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your son. Maybe it's your daughter that he's after. There is no offense for that attack in your own power. It is no coincidence that two weeks ago on Father's Day that Pastor Tom taught this very verse, Matthew 21, 13, and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves. It is no coincidence that your very whatsoevers, your prayers for my family that day, interceded and were heard by the Father. He blessed us with refuge, peace, joy, and his strength and a hedge of protection around us during a horrible time. It is no coincidence that in the following verse taught on that day by Pastor Tom, that it dealt with the disease of the body, Matthew 21, 14. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Now, I'm sure my dad wanted healing of the cancer, mainly to outlive my mom with what I know with my dad. Personally, in this case, I consider the cancer a gift. It slowed my dad down. It made him pause to seek the Lord. And he really, really dove into getting right with the Lord. I'm not so sure that would have happened without the cancer because he still would have been going. The busyness of life takes over. Modern medicine has come a long way. But we all will still die. One day, every one of us, it's 100% fact. The irony in my dad's health issue is he was actually on the upswing. His worst, worst health days were actually behind him. The question of when we go is the Lord's to know. It's not ours. We don't know. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be next month. It could be next year. If you aren't saved and you struggle to understand some of these things I'm saying in regards to your own final destination, the very idea, the possibility of you ending up in hell should jolt you. It should make you pause and go, what is this guy talking about? By the way, that very verse was highlighted in my dad's Bible. There are no coincidences, Christian, if we pay attention.
context, I'm going to read the next group of scrip- scripture, Matthew 21, 17 to 22. And he left them and went out of the city in Bethany, and he lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And in all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Now, we studied this verse not long ago on Good Friday. You know, Matthew and Mark tell of the events of the curse in the fig tree, and Mark is more of a chronological, and Matthew is topical. That city that they went back to was Jerusalem, of course. And there was no fruit on the fig tree. The Gospel of Mark says that for the time of figs was not. The fig tree often represents the nation of Israel. And as we know, Israel is God's chosen people who, who turned from him and twisted his law into something of their own making. They created a religion of man, a temple for business, and a system that led the people to follow them. Man took over. Man sat on that throne. You know, when you pay attention, you always see these things, and we had real life this morning. And part of that discussion was, is people read this, and they they try to make God be who they want him to be. This Bible is very, very clear on who God is and what God wants us to be. It's not that way. We must follow this and listen to it. This still goes on today. Religious systems with huge cathedrals and buildings and Places, places of worship where the Lord is not on the throne. If you're a believer, and I pray you all are, that we're the temple of the God and we are supposed to bear fruit. No irony to Will's song in his prayer talking about bearing fruit. Did you guys notice the scripture he used? Romans 7 about bearing fruit? That was not planned either. That was for each and every one of you, for God to show you What do you want you to do? It was pretty clear. In John 15, 1 through 5, the Lord says this. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. And remember the disciples saw that withered fig tree. It was dead. Immediate death on something that looked alive. A fruit tree's purpose is to bear fruit. Did you notice the big if that Jesus said in those verses? Let me read 21, just so I have clarity. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but you shall also be able to shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now remember the mountain. That sounds like uh, just an impossibility thing. That's an extreme that the Lord's talking about here, right? There are millions of things in between that. I.e., I pray for my dad to be saved. I pray for my kids to be saved. I pray that in this horrible trial I'm going through that the Lord Lord will give me peace. In this room, I am sure there are many peaks and valleys happening right now. I don't know what that mountain is for you. I know I'm willing to pray with you about it. 
as I know others are. Give it to the Lord. Cast it to the Lord. Have faith. The last verse that I've been anchoring on here for a while. And in all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. All means all. All things, big or small. We all have our whatsoevers. We all have our circle of friends, work partners, co-workers, people that we come in contact every single day. There are many whatsoevers that, that you can use and pray for. Ask in prayer, believe, and you shall receive, according to his will, of course. In the power of the Spirit, just so. Just so. The title of this message is, What If? But it could very well be, what if we get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit go? It could also very well be, what if I desired more of the Lord? What if I really cared about my family and my friends that I would pray for them every day? It could be any of those. Bringing this in for a landing here. If you go to church, you should always note what blessings you received. If you don't, you have no idea what blessings you'll miss or did miss. If you open your Bible every day and spend time with the Lord, how might he bless you? You have no idea until you do it. If you choose not to dive in, who misses out on your fellowship here, on your wisdom, on the talents and skills that the Lord gave you to bless this body with? If you choose not to go to the events or gatherings and certain things when these announcements are there, it's way beyond the announcements. It's, it's about time together. It's about sharing and sowing and, and, and diving into each other's life because I need to know you better than just you walking in this door because I need to know when your countenance is down and I need to know that I should walk up to you and put my arm around you and say hey what's going on you okay and I need to pray with you same thing with the happy times each of us needs to do that if we choose not to love one another what pain occurs what unseen wound bleeds that we ain't seeing God's supreme love is in you if you have the Holy Spirit remember that uh, that sermon that Brian gave me way back when in that timeline listen to this Pastor Chuck Smith said this in that sermon so it is my purpose during these studies to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. And it is my prayer that you come into a long and faithful relationship with him, that you will come to depend upon him for your very guidance, for your help, for your strength, for your comfort, and for power. And I pray that he will come and become closer to you than any person you know. May you be bathed in his glory, and may you yield his influence as you allow him to conform your life into the image of Christ. That is no coincidence that Brian gave me that. Family, the Lord put us together for a reason. And if you think of all the connections, the timing, the schedules, and the events that put you in this seat today, you realize that it's not a coincidence that you're here. I challenge you to do the math on that. God wants us together for his glory. Let's get to it. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for this message. Thank you for all these people that are here today, Lord. Thank you just to, to, to being able to gather and talk about you openly. And I know there's many countries that don't have that freedom, Lord. 
And we have it, and we have this word over and over again. I know sometimes that uh, the busyness of life and the business of this world that, that Satan likes to just take our time away. But we got to care about it more. We got to we got to love it like the love letter you got from a girlfriend in high school. Lord, I know there's this is some amazing work that you do in each and every one of us, Lord. Will you give us the strength and just the boldness to just the, the courage to step out and, and just dive in to what you'll have for us. Will you bless this church? Will you bless this town? And will you bless the, the, all the churches in the area, Lord, that are, that are sharing your word? We need revival, Lord. There is a lot of crazy, crazy things going on in this world today. I know it's really easy to step back and just allow things to happen and not be part of the solution to focusing people on you. But you left each and every one of us here until the day we come be with you to do your work. And if we're not doing it, then we're not paying attention and we're not surrendering and we're not being obedient and we're not being submitted. Nor are we doing anything in the spirit. The love of you is in each and every one of us. And you have directed us to share it. Lord, give us the strength to do that. Give us the opportunity to do that. I pray that you bless this time.